Hello everyone and welcome to the Road CC channel. Today we're taking a closer look at the Giant Revolt Zero. Now this bike ran away with our Gravel Bike Editor's Choice Award this year, which means it's a brilliant blend of performance and value. In this video, we're gonna take a closer look at the Revolt Zero and what makes it such a great bike for the money. Before we do though, don't forget to subscribe to the Road CC channel and hit that bell icon so that you get notified every time we post new content. There's loads of great videos coming up, I promise. And how do Road CC's Bike of the Year awards work? Well, we only give awards to bikes that our tech team have independently reviewed. There's a link to our bike reviews in the description. These are bikes we've spent time with and really put the miles into so you can be safe in the knowledge that this is good advice that you can trust. Each year we sit around over Christmas, we have a mince pie or two and we work out which bikes have made it into the final award lists. There's been less sitting around together this year, of course, and getting together for these videos has been a little a bit complicated too. So I'm going to hand over to Liam and Dave who are getting cozy in the Road CC club room now and they've got everything you need to know. Thanks Becca. Yes, this is the Giant Revolt Zero and at £1,799 it's a great value gravel bike that's been awarded our Editor's Choice Award. It's the most expensive of the three aluminium Revolt bikes in Giant's range, with the Revolt 1 coming in at £1,499 and the Revolt 2 at £1,199. Above that, there's the Carbon Revolt Advance, which starts at £2,199, and the Advanced Pro range goes all the way up to nearly five grand. So in terms of its place in Giant's range and in the overall gravel market, this isn't an especially expensive bike, but it's got a lot going for it. And we found for the money, you get impressive performance from the Revolt Zero. It's also a very versatile bike that'll turn its hand to a bit of commuting and road riding too. So Dave, you've had the chance to put in some serious miles on this bike. What's your overall impressions? Well, it's a very capable bike. So the frame is quite compact. Uh, There's plenty of standover height, and that makes it a nice chuckable bike when things get narrow and technical. Um, the stack to reach ratio on this bike, uh, this large frame is 1.54, which you know is more or less spot on for a bike that's designed to be doing a little bit of everything. Um, the geometry here, it's loosely based on an endurance road bike, but we've got slacker angles here and a longer wheelbase for extra stability, and that makes it great fun off-road. And at the same time, it's not too upright for on-road stuff? No, definitely not. I mean, if you put some slicker tyres on this, you'd have a pretty capable commuting bike or a winter road riding bike. It'll take mud guards as well, um, Giant make their own mud guards, or you could opt for a set of quick release guards, something like the SKS Speed Rockers, for example. So you're getting Giant aluminium frame here and a carbon fork. What is that like in terms of comfort? Yeah, it's pretty decent. I mean, certainly you can feel the difference between this and a more expensive bike in terms of suppleness. So there's a fair amount of feedback through the contact points, especially on hard surfaces. Um, you can drop a bit of pressure out of the tyres, obviously. I mean, you spend more on a carbon or a titanium frame, you get something that's a bit more supple and forgiving, but for an alloy bike, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, one thing that does help is the seat post. Uh, so yeah, Giant has used their defuse seat post in this bike. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, well, clues in the name, obviously. Uh, it's, it's sort of D profile, so it has a, a flattened edge at the rear. Um, Giant says that that's more compliant. Uh, than a round section seat post and you know I'd say that it does make a difference. Um, it's an alloy post on this bike and obviously that's a bit less effective than the carbon ones that the more expensive models get but it, you know it's still making a little bit of difference. Um, there's a defuse handlebar at the front too which has a nice swept back top section which is really comfy for cruising and for climbing. And that handlebar, it effectively shortens the reach of the bike. Does that mean, make it uh, feel a bit more upright than the geometry suggests? Slightly, although mostly I use the hood's position and it's not as noticeable from there. And the comfort levels are okay? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are some things that you could do to improve them. These tires are pretty sturdy. And although they're good enough all rounders, a switch to something a little bit more supple would definitely be a help. So those are Giant's cross-cut tires, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so they are 38 millimeters wide and they're matched with Giant's SX2 alloy wheel set. 
They come set up tubeless, which is one less thing which you have to do further down the line. You just have to add sealant once you get the bike home. Yeah, they're good enough all-rounders and they will last. They're fine on gravel. Um, they're a bit compact for mud. They don't really work there. So not really a winter choice for off-roading, especially around here. Yeah. Um, you can get up to a 45 mil tire in here. So if you wanted to swap them out for something more aggressive, you could always do that. And you could always upgrade to a carbon bar if you wanted a bit more comfort at the front or even just some thicker bar tape. But in the stock build that we have here, it's still a good bike to ride. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I was surprised how well it climbs, actually. Given that it's not especially light, it's just over 10 kilos, it feels really lively off-road and it is a lot of fun. Transmission-wise, you're getting a mix of mostly Shimano GRX kit here. 600 series shifters and 800 series mechs. The chainset is a Praxis Alba subcompact, so it's a 4832. And at the back, there's an 11 to 34 cassette. So that should give you a good range of gears. Yeah, a really good range of gears for quick road riding and, you know, slow and technical stuff as well. The clutch mech at the back, that's really good. When it gets bumpy, you get so much less chain slap and makes the gears more reliable. Uh, it's nice to see an external bottom bracket on a bike like this as well, because, you know, this is going to see some grit and grime. And once it's time to swap it out, it's so much easier of a job. Right, Dave, sum it up for us. What makes this worthy of Off-Road CC's Editor's Choice Award? Well, what that award means is it's a really good combination of performance and value. And that just sums up this bike really well. Getting a really good frame and fork that's well built up. It's got quality components on it for the money. And I was really pleasantly surprised by the level of performance, especially off-road. Um, you know, this is just a fun bike. Um, it's very much at home on the gravel and it can easily cope with some more technical terrain than that, especially if you swap out the tyres for something a bit more aggressive. And Dave, even if you never left the tarmac like me, uh, solid choice? <laughs> yeah, I mean, for winter riding or for commuting, it's just a really dependable bike for all different kinds of riding. Okay, well, thank you very much for summarising that for us. If you've got any more questions about this bike, do pop them down in the comments below. Dave will happily answer them for I you. I will, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this on the Road TC channel. Cheers for watching.